The Germans had many bizarre and extreme ideas during World War II, and one of the most outlandish was their concept for a space-based weapon. Hubbed the Sun Gun or Sonnengenwehr in German, this idea involved placing a massive mirror, about 9 square kilometers in size, in orbit around the Earth. The purpose of this mirror would be to concentrate sunlight and focus it onto specific locations on Earth, much like how children sometimes use magnifying glasses to focus sunlight and burn things. The theory was that this could be used to set cities ablaze from space. It's a concept that sounds more like something from a science fiction story than a real military plan. The Fuhrer, known for his cruel nature, might have found this concept particularly appealing considering his past. Fortunately, this project never progressed beyond the planning stages. But it serves as a chilling reminder of the extreme lengths the Germans were willing to go to in order to achieve their goals of world domination. It's well known that the Germans were capable of extreme actions, and this is evident in the advanced weaponry they developed during World War II. This topic has been explored in various discussions and documentaries, drawing interest not for ideological reasons but because of the technical sophistication of these weapons. The Germans were able to create formidable military technology, making them a tough opponent. Some of their notable innovations include the V-1 and V-2 rockets, Panzer tanks, Messerschmitt fighter planes, and the STG-44, which was the first assault rifle. These advanced weapons played a significant role as the Germans swiftly conquered territories. However, the Allied forces eventually regrouped and mounted a strong resistance as the war turned against them. And with the Soviet Red Army closing in on Berlin, the Fuhrer took his own life using a Walther PPK pistol. This marked a pivotal moment in the war, leading to the eventual downfall of the German regime on April 30th, 1945, marking a significant turn in World War II. Fewer's death was followed by the surrender of the remaining German leadership one week later. This event signaled the conclusion of the conflict in Europe, despite the Germans' deployment of some of the most advanced military technology of the time. They ultimately failed in their conquest. It's interesting to note that the outcome of the war might have been drastically different if the Germans had successfully developed and used their most extreme weapon concepts. Right. But before delving deeper into the German era, it's worth looking back at an ancient figure whose ideas influenced many modern inventions, Archimedes. Archimedes is a well-known historical figure, renowned for his immense contributions to science and mathematics. He's credited with determining the value of pi, making groundbreaking advancements in calculus long before it was formally recognized and discovering the principle that objects submerged in a fluid lose weight equivalent to the weight of the displaced fluid. These contributions highlight Archimedes' enduring impact on the scientific world. Archimedes, known for his significant contributions to hydrostatics, is also associated with a legendary invention used to defend his hometown, Syracuse, in Sicily. This invention, often referred to as the death ray, is a subject of much speculation and debate. It's unclear whether it truly existed, as we're discussing events from around 212 BC. And over time, myths and exaggerations can blur the lines between fact and fiction. The death ray, as the legend goes, consisted of a series of mirrors that supposedly concentrated the sun's rays to set fire to Roman ships before they could land. This idea seems quite improbable and its first mention in historical records occurred more than 300 years after Syracuse's downfall. This delay raises doubts about its existence. If it were such an effective weapon, it's curious why it wasn't documented more promptly and widely. In recent times, this concept has intrigued many, inspiring attempts to recreate or explore the feasibility of such a device. Various groups have attempted to test the feasibility of Archimedes' supposed death ray, Notably, the popular TV show Mythbusters tackled this challenge twice, ultimately concluding it was a myth after failing to recreate it. However, there have been some successful experiments. In 1973, a Greek engineer and later researchers at MIT in 2005 managed to ignite wooden structures using mirrors, somewhat supporting the concept. These experiments, though successful to an extent, didn't quite match the legendary accounts of the death ray single-handedly defeating a Roman fleet. The accuracy of these ancient tales is questionable, but the idea of using mirrors to harness the sun's energy as a weapon has certainly endured through history. 
Now let's fast forward 2,000 years to explore how this ancient concept influenced later ideas and inventions. In 1923, Hermann Oberth, a German rocket scientist, introduced a pioneering idea for placing mirrors in space. This proposal came a decade before Hitler's rise to power. Herbert's vision was initially aimed at peaceful applications. He imagined these space mirrors could be used to light up harbors and melt ice in frozen rivers. While today we have simpler ways to achieve these goals, Oberth's innovative thinking deserves recognition. However, as the political landscape in Germany shifted towards fascism, Oberth's concept of space mirrors began to take on a more sinister potential use. The information about this period becomes somewhat unclear, with much of our knowledge derived from a 1945 article in Life magazine, published shortly after World War II ended. At this time, Germany was in ruins, and many of its people faced extreme hardships. In the aftermath of World War II, few were keen to highlight that the former German leadership had plans for an enormous space mirror, a concept that seemed more like science fiction than reality. According to an article from 1945, German scientists had been planning to build a space station that could house humans and a gigantic mirror, which, in their vision, could have been used to control humanity. This plan was typical of the extreme and often nefarious ideas associated with the Germans. The envisioned space station would have been assembled in orbit, with components sent up via rockets. The idea predated the launch of Sputnik, the first man-made object in space, by about 15 years, showing the Germans forward thinking in rocketry. Although a successful space launch during World War II was out of their reach, it was a goal they were progressing towards. On the proposed space station was to orbit Earth at an altitude of 35,785 kilometers. Equipped with docking stations for supply rockets and solar power generators, the design included a novel docking mechanism featuring a 9.1 meter wide opening in the mirror through which rockets could pass, akin to a spear piercing through a soft target. This ambitious plan, although never realized, reflects the advanced level of German rocket technology at the time. The envisioned design for the space station included a unique docking system where the front of the rocket would connect with the station's interior while the rear remained outside to supply oxygen within the station. They planned to use hydroponic gardens with a focus on growing thousands of pumpkin plants known for their high oxygen production. These plants would rely on artificial fluorescent lights for growth as direct sunlight in space without Earth's protective atmosphere would be too harsh for them. The station's occupants would have worn specially designed shoes with magnetic soles to help them stay grounded in the zero-gravity environment. Additionally, harnesses would be necessary to prevent accidental collisions with the ceiling or other parts of the station due to the lack of gravity. The article also mentioned the choice of building materials for the station, highlighting metallic sodium as a key component. This choice was likely due to its abundance and some of its properties that would have been advantageous in space construction. The plan for the space station included the use of sodium cyanide and sodium peroxide, materials later used in nuclear power plants for heat exchange. The estimated timeline for building this station was around 15 years, with a budget of approximately 3 million German marks, which would be around $107 million today. However, this cost estimate was likely far from accurate especially considering the high expenses associated with rocket launches, a factor the Germans, who didn't yet have space-capable rockets, probably underestimated. As for the proposed sun gun, the details were even less clear than those for the station. It's likely that its construction would have followed a similar approach to the stations, involving complex and costly procedures. The German sun gun plan involved transporting parts to space using rockets and assembling them there, likely using metallic sodium. The design was for a parabolic reflector, a mirror curved upwards at its edges, which the Germans believed would focus light more effectively than a concave mirror. A space station's crew would have received encrypted instructions via radio or wireless telegraph. Upon receiving an attack command, they would have maneuvered the massive mirror to a specific position to focus the sun's rays on a target, theoretically incinerating everything at the focal point. After an attack, the mirror would be redirected away from Earth. However, the feasibility of this idea was highly questionable. The immense time, cost, and resources needed for such a project would have been a significant obstacle. 
Moreover, it's doubtful whether a single large parabolic mirror could precisely target and destroy specific locations on Earth. An alternative might have been to use multiple mirrors, but that idea is even more outlandish. As unrealistic as this concept was, it's interesting to note that Russia experimented with a similar idea in 1992. They launched the Znamya 2, a 20-meter wide solar mirror, into space. On February 4th, 1993, it created a 5-kilometer wide spot of light, moving across Europe at 8 kilometers per hour. Its brightness was similar to the full moon, posing no threat to Earth. This event was mostly unnoticed due to cloudy weather, but some people did observe the unusual light in the sky. In 1999, Russia launched Zamaya 2.5, a project aimed to achieve a brightness of 5 to 10 times that of a full moon. However, the mission faced a setback when the mirror became entangled with the spacecraft's antenna and tour. Despite efforts to salvage the situation, the project was eventually scrapped, and Zinnia 2.5 was taken out of orbit. Plans for a third Zinnamia, with an even larger diameter of 60 to 70 meters, were in the works, but these two were abandoned following the failure of Zamia 2.5. The German sun gun is one of those ideas that seem too extraordinary to be true. It's likely that the project never advanced beyond the initial stages due to the unrealistic projections of cost and time. The mere fact that such a concept was under consideration is remarkable. The sun gun, had it been realized, would have presented a formidable threat, potentially more alarming than nuclear weapons. Fortunately, it remained an unfulfilled idea, one of the most outlandish yet fascinating concepts in history.